now recognize the uh, gentleman from Ohio who was here when the gavel fell, apparently, uh, Mr. Latta for five. I would just tell our members, too, that they anticipate votes on the House floor sometime to be called between 1045 and 11, and that we would not walk off the floor until 130, which makes it really unlikely we would resume this hearing. So the extent to which we can move through the questions, uh, that's the latest news. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and again, thanks uh, for our panel for being with us today. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a true believer in the incentive auctions, and especially what's in the bill. I have a piece of legislation out there uh, to uh, auction on the, spect the, the spectrum. And I, but I do find it interesting, especially in, in uh, Senator Smith's opening remarks. Uh, you know, I think everyone's out there when they he, when you. Uh, have to say truly voluntary, and I put that in uh, quotation marks. I think that there's some uh, mistrust for some reason around about Washington that things that are voluntary aren't truly voluntary. And so I think that's why it's very, very important that we make sure that it is truly voluntary and that we don't have to put those quotation marks around, around what we, uh, we want to do around this place. But if I could, moving right along, uh, on page three, Mr. Uh, Crampton, of your testimony, you, st you st uh, cite that there are three good features uh, of the draft legislation that are worth mentioning, and you go on to say that the draft does not impose restrictions on which broadcasters can participate in the auction. Restrictions of this form would destroy competition in the reverse auction among broadcasters. And can you expound a bit upon um, how the reverse auction will work on the incentive auctions provided under the bill? Sure. So. You know, it's essentially, it's a two-sided auction, so we need competition on both sides. Um, one important aspect of the competition is on the supply side from the broadcasters. And so you come to a market like Washington, D.C., there's lots of different uh, over-the-air broadcasters in Washington, D.C. They're put to a simple question. You can stay on the air as is. Uh, you can uh, turn over, uh, say, half your spectrum, share with another and, 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 or you can uh, completely shut down your over-the-air uh, business. Now, we need to have competition among those broadcasters in order to get a competitive price for the willingness to relinquish spectrum. Otherwise, they could exercise market power. We need the same thing on the demand side, coming from the operators. And this is why the competition and things like interoperability are really important. Because right now, we, the industry has been moving towards a duopoly on the demand side with the two dominant carriers uh, commanding over 90% of the earnings in the industry right now. Uh, the uh, small players, um, the regional players, and the, the smaller national players play a very important role in creating the competition that uh, creates the auction revenues in the, on the demand side. Now, if we've got the competition on both sides of the auction, what that does is creates an enormous amount of value for uh, the, the, con the, con the taxpayer and for society uh, at large. And so that's, that's the goal, and that's why you have to be very careful with any provisions that you introduce. Make sure that the provision is pro-competitive rather than uh, uh, otherwise. And sometimes these things are subtle. Well, and again, do you think, how do you think this is going to affect the revenue that the auction might produce? And again, what's your estimate for what that might bring in? Well, I can tell you that the demand is exploding on the demand side. So, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and this is a few years off. It would take two years, even if you pass legislation today, it would probably take two years to line everything up and make it happen. Uh, by then, there's going to be much, much more demand than there is now as people discover the wonderful, amazing things that these phones can do. And uh, as a result, and it's not just phones, it's, ta it's tablets, everything. Um, so as a result, I, uh, I, I'm quite confident that it'll command a very high price. That's what we're seeing in auctions around the world for the 4G spectrum. Uh, I've been involved in many of the auctions in, in Europe and continue to be involved in those. Um, and other countries are talking about them now as well. And the amounts that the bidders are putting on the table are in, even in uh, countries much, much smaller than the United States, are in billions. And so I've got to believe that this spectrum is going to be worth, if there's competition on both the supply side and the demand side, it's going to be worth uh, tens of billions. 
and possibly much, much more. And that's very important, especially as our, uh, uh, given the, 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 the debt problems that we're facing in our economy right now. Well, thank you very much. And Mr. Chairman, with the interest of time, I will yield back.